Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zadai with you with Warrior Notes and Warrior Church. Welcome this week. We've got an exciting agenda for you. We've got some things that we want to talk to you about. The Lord is moving by His Spirit and He is a commander of truth. That's what we're going to talk about this week. So Father, I thank you that you are a commander of truth and that you rule and reign in truth. You rule and reign in righteousness and justice. And I thank you, Lord, that you rule and reign in love and that you are a great and mighty God. I thank you for for the angel armies that are here with us. And I thank you, Lord, that you're working everything out for your good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. May we have eyes to see and ears to hear as the Spirit of God speaks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, well, I got I got my wife Kathy here again and we got Pastor Ryan and Pastor Mike. Um, you know, we've we've uh, had some exciting things happen at Warrior Notes. And so we're, we're excited about what God's doing. And one of the things that we're learning about God is, is that he, not only does he stand for truth and it, that the spirit of God is a spirit of truth, but we're finding out that there's a command about God. He's a commander and um, Jesus is very bold and the Holy Spirit is actually a lot bolder than we think. And he is a, a, a advocate and a helper, the Holy Spirit is. And w really, when you look it up and you do this word study, the advocate is, is the idea of a lawyer. And um, now lawyers aren't just, you know, always nice people. If there's something going on, they, they will uh, get to the bottom of it and, and they will push for the truth. And, and, you know, that's a good lawyer. And a judge will judge by the truth. That's a good judge. Okay, but God, um, he has a command about him because he's in full authority. So we have to remember that, that even though it seems like down here, people get away with things and that there's, there's all this injustice and unrighteousness and corruptness and things like that. You got to remember that God is, he runs a tight ship in heaven and there's not a, yeah. he's a commander. So if, when he says something, it doesn't come back to him void. It says in Isaiah 55, when he says something, it goes out and accomplishes what it said and, and, and it'll come back. So with that being, it being said, when the spirit of God says something, then it's the truth. Okay. So, so, so when the Spirit of God comes on you and you say what the Spirit's saying, then there's a command and an authority about that with you that you have a, a personality change. You can, you can get really bold when you're proclaiming truth and that truth will drive out the devil. Yes. It actually like not only paralyzes the devil, it'll drive him out. So Jesus, when he said to the devils leave, there was a command about him. So the devils, they, they, they left. They, they threw a fit, they argued, but they, they left, okay? Mark, Mark 3, 15 says that Jesus gave his disciples authority to drive out devils. So we're his disciples, and we know that all the believing ones now have that authority as well. When you look at Mark 16 and, you know, the, the Great Commission that is mentioned in the Gospels and things like that, like in Mark 16, verse 27, in, um, it, says, it says in the, um, in the ESV uh, version, it says, These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out devils and they will speak with new tongues, among the other things that are mentioned there. Just want to emphasize the casting out of devils. Also in 1 John 4, 4, in the New Living Translation, it says, But you belong to God. My dear children, you have already won a victory over the people, those people, the ones that were opposing them, because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. So those people who are coming in against the Christians uh, in, in 1 John, the, the Lord is telling, telling the people through John that you have already won a victory over these people at, because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit that's in the world. Mm -hmm. So we got to remind ourselves that when, when, when we get stolen from and there's all kinds of injustice and uh, fraud and things like that, we got to remember that, that, that uh, there's, a, there's a greater one inside of you and you can't forget that no matter what it looks like. So, so I, w the, the Lord, Lord has a command about him. And when, when he casts out the devils, they, they left. Okay, now you see this transference to the disciples and then to the 70, right? So I just want you all to talk. I'll start with you, Pastor Ryan. Um, you, you, it's really interesting how the transfer happened. And 
Yet the 70 were surprised when they came back. They were actually surprised, weren't they, yeah. that, that the devils had left? And then the, the disciples, they had problems where the devil wouldn't leave. And so the, the uh, people, they went around the disciples and complained to Jesus about them and said, they couldn't do it. Can you do it? And he would do it. And then he turned to the disciples and said, you know, how long am I going to be with you? And uh, they asked, well, why didn't, why didn't it come out? Because he said, because uh, of your, your unbelief. And he said, so, so um, can you comment on how, you know, you, you know, uh, you've walked with God for a long time. You, all of you have. Uh, you know that the devils have to leave. But how do you transfer that to, you know, like all, all of you out there, you want to be able to have the assurance that when you say you're not requesting that the devils leave, you're, you're driving them out. You're being forceful. How do you, because you, you see this, you tell people that and it's kind of like a nice thing to talk about, but like what happens when a devil starts manifesting? Yes, yeah. sir. Well, you, you know me. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a love of God guy. I'm a yeah. love of father. Yeah. And uh, I love that part about Jesus, but he also turns over tables. <laughs> and, you know, he tells the guys, get your act together too. Yeah. But then John yeah. will lean his head on, on Jesus. But I, you see in Acts chapter two, there was a major shift there when the Holy Spirit came on all those disciples. And then Acts 3, uh, the man at the gate, I believe it's Acts 3, uh, looked at uh, uh, Peter and John, I believe it was, uh, it was Peter. And, and he's like, look at us. And he says, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Yeah. You know, where was that guy in the book of Luke? <laughs> you know? oh, and then yeah. in Acts 4, when they talked about the boldness of Peter, they realized that they had been with Jesus. And so, uh, which is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, they understood the connection between the way Paul is being bold and strong and the fact that he spent all those years with Jesus and something clicked in Peter and he was changed. And a lot of it has to do with, uh, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit coming uh, upon them and all that. But also uh, they had to have that confidence that what Jesus told them works for them, too. They, you know, uh, I, I always imagine because you quote that scripture all the time, which I love, uh, you know, they they couldn't drive out that demon. You know, I have I think that Peter was kind of like looking around to see Jesus help, you know, not knowing <laughs> that he had what it took. Yeah. Uh, if he would have yielded in the right way. But yeah. anyway, when we when we uh, do what you're saying, uh, we build that strength and confidence because we know whom we believe. Yeah. You know, we know that Jesus is going to carry us through. And I mean, let me just say this one last thing. When when you look at somebody who's crippled and say, look at me, get up and walk. I mean, you're a, you're you got it. You're a different person. And so yeah. I think that there was a major thing that happened in those disciples when the Holy Spirit came uh, on the day of Pentecost. And it changed everything uh, and everything just kind of aligned for them from that point on. Wow. Pastor Mike, um, you know, I know you encounter this too, you know, like how people, they come to you or you, you know, you know, you, you know, have to speak truth, yeah. but then, you know, kind of, the, you know, the person, you know, their personalities and you see people, uh, they're trying to receive the word of God with humility, but there, there seems to be, why is there a disconnect yeah. between yeah. what God says yeah. and, and the ability for people to just accept yeah, that at face yeah. value. Is, is it something that's going on in people's heads? Is yeah. it there? Is it there more there a mental thing? Yeah. You know, I think a lot of it comes down to realizing you are a son or a daughter. Oh, it okay. comes down, you know, and you've talked about this before, you have authority because you're under authority. Yeah. And yeah. when you begin to realize, I'm a son of the king. You know, it's like if, if we were back in the, those, those old Bible days and you were under a king and the king said, go take over the city, you wouldn't think twice. You would just do it because the king would never send you to do something that you could not accomplish. That's right. And it's the same thing with the word of God. He sent us to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. He has given us full authority. And when we're under him as a son, mm -hmm. as a daughter, we can execute that without even blinking. Yeah. I mean, I know I used to be like, you know, you, you would be, you know, when you're a new Christian, you're like, okay, you know, you have your first experience where there's a little devil and you're like, come out and you're like hoping it comes out, you know? Yeah. But the more you get to around your father and you realize that he is enthroned in authority, he is authority that just gets on you. And then you start to become bold as a lion, like you were just talking about. And then the next time you see a devil, you're like, how dare you? Defy <laughs> the, 
my God. Yeah. And now, because you're under that authority, you are now executing that authority. Well, that's good. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Kathy, did you have anything sure. you want to share with this? seems like the Lord is really highlighting just his character. You know, yeah. when you know who he is, you're going to not question any command he gives you. And yeah. this scripture just popped out at me um, when you first asked us to share. It's in Romans 4, and it's just packed. Um, it says, it's talking about Abraham, who against hope believed in hope that he would become the father of many nations. But then it says he was not weak in faith. He didn't consider his own body or his circumstances when he was like, you know, he was really old, 100 years, or his wife. But the point is here is that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded, he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. And I feel like that's like the, what the Lord's really highlighting, is that getting to that place where we're fully persuaded that what God has yes. promised, he's also able to perform, yeah. And he, Abraham didn't have to perform it. It says right mm -hmm. here that it was, it was like counted him as righteousness just because he believed yep. that. He like believed, he's like, okay, God, I believe it. Him. And then yeah. boom, he, it happened. He yeah. became the father. He's our yeah. father, yeah. father yeah. of many nations. You know, he had a baby and he was just like really old. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. <laughs> you, you put it back. Okay, okay so, so um, the, 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 <laughs> The bottom line with all of us as believers, as warriors in this generation, is that certain things have already been established as truth and in heaven. We call it absolute truth, and we've talked about that many times here at Warrior Knows. Okay, there is a commander over that truth. He sits on a throne, and he enforces that truth. Okay, so he proclaims truth. He is truth, but then he sends the Holy Spirit. He, sp he sends the Holy Spirit, a person yes. who enforces truth. He is the spirit of truth. Okay, so with that, with all of that, I want you to discuss among yourselves now some of the some of the um, dynamics that you can see are are happening with you personally and with with the, the groups of people that you're involved with, where God's authority is not established because truth is not established, and then the transference of that truth, God God is uh, has a command about him that we're 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 having to to deal with people who are actually maybe not understanding what's going on, but they're yielding to evil spirits. Mm -hmm. So the evil spirits are always gonna undermine God. They're always gonna undermine truth. They're gonna steal, kill, and destroy. That's what evil spirits do. Okay, but Jesus comes to give you life. So the commander of life, the commander of truth, is, is, a, is, a, is a person who drives out devils all the time, no matter what. He's always going to drive out the enemy, because the enemy is working against the truth. So discuss among yourselves some of the, 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 the maybe some of the misconceptions about, about this subject of driving out devils and, and that the Lord being a commander, um, not, just, uh, not just truth, but a, a forceful, bold commander, and that, that driving out devils is not something you request. Uh, devil, yeah. you 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 don't even you don't even. There's no mercy. These uh, these devils, they just need driven out. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to ask ask you to discuss among yourselves the some of the misconceptions about this subject, and then also um, how s Satan can get in and get you to be too soft on certain things. Now that doesn't mean that you rebuke people, mm -hmm. but what it means is is that is that the pe people start to change, their personality starts to change, and you sense that this is really uh, a spiritual thing going on, then you address the devil. Maybe they won't even know that you did it, but you take in within yourself, you, you become a commander, and you have the anointing comes on you, and, and that's what I'm talking about. I have a personality change when the Spirit of God comes on me because I have a command about me, and when I speak, it's from the other realm. Yeah. So talk about that, okay? That's gonna that's gonna take a while, but but because that's a good subject. But think about the anointing and how it breaks the yoke. Talk about things like that, and I'm gonna pray for you right now. Let's all pray for everybody at Warrior Church. Thank you, Father, uh, for for everyone all over the world at, meeting right now at Warrior Church. We just thank you, Lord, that you're you're building us up. 
You're not tearing us down. You're building us up in the unity of the faith. You're, you're causing us to be mature all over the world. We're, we're becoming fighting men and women yes. of God, warriors, to, to change this generation, to be, represent you on the earth. And I thank you that you're the commander of our faith. You're the commander of truth. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you anoint us with a yoke-breaking anointing and that by that power, we can drive out devils. And I drive out Satan right yes. now. I drive out the devils right now in the name of Jesus. I break the power of the enemy over the people. And I thank you, Father, that, that, that they will have godly, um, very, very uh, truthful discussions now about the truth that you've given them. And I thank you for healing. I thank you for deliverance from trauma. I thank you, Father, that discrepancies will disappear and, and discouragement will disappear. I thank you, Lord, you lift us up into the throne. In Jesus' name, Thank you. Amen. amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us this week on Warrior Church, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.